In the previous video, we showed how you might be able to interact with Kubernetes using a tool called kubectl or kube control. The way most people typically use this tool is they have a couple of YAML files that define a deployment. And then you could pass these files to kube control. And in turn, this would update the Kubernetes cluster that is currently running. Now, one thing that was quite convenient about this is that you could change a YAML file and then update the Kubernetes cluster. But a downside that we saw coming our way was that we might have to maintain many of these YAML files if we are dealing with a more complex deployment. And if we start thinking about all the services that we might have with a Rasa deployment, then we may require a new layer of abstraction. After all, a Rasa deployment might have Rasa open source containers, Raza X containers, custom action containers, and maybe even a container that has duckling to help you fetch entities. And we need all of these containers to run inside of pods with a service so that they interact with each other in a nice way. And we also need to set up some ingress. So here's where we have a need for a new tool. We're looking for a way to simplify all of this. So here's a slightly different proposal. Let's say that I'm going to have a collection of these YAML files and that I'm going to call that a chart. The analogy here would be that you have a Python package, but in Helm you would have a chart which represents a collection of YAML files, which can then in turn be used by Helm to update a Kubernetes cluster or to get it in a state that you're interested in. The main thing that this chart offers is an abstraction over all of these YAML files that we were dealing with before. Another way of thinking about this is that we might have a separate YAML file for, let's say, Duckling, and another one for Raza open source. And these YAML files might still describe pods and services, but how all of these YAML files need to interact with each other, that is something that a Helm chart can offer for you. A Helm chart should be seen as a configuration file, though but it's a configuration file that has lots of these templates that it can use under the hood to construct a deployment that is ready for Kubernetes. In terms of using Helm to update a deployment, it's very similar to the situation with kubectl though. Let's say that we had a chart, that's the old version of an application, which has caused our Kubernetes cluster to be in a certain state with certain pods and certain services. Well, then Helm can still be used to use a new version of that chart to update our deployment. In that sense, it's somewhat similar to the kubectl command. The main difference here is that the chart will contain different templates and is a more convenient way to describe an entire application with lots of different services. Let's now take a step back, just to make sure that we have our vocabulary in order. Helm is a tool that helps you install full-fledged applications on top of Kubernetes. Helm in this case is the tool. Similarly, pip and python is the tool that you would use to install a Python package. The main difference here is that Helm installs it on Kubernetes, where Python typically installs it inside of a virtual environment or on your local hard drive. Now the Helm chart over here would be the description of everything that we're interested in installing. And the whole point of a Helm chart is that you don't have to write all of these kubectl deployments yourself, but that we can give you a predefined set of files that can install everything for you. If we now start thinking about the features that we need under the hood, then I hope that you would agree that this Helm chart needs to be configurable. And that's something that's strictly different from installing a Python package. After all, we might need to pass in some credentials for security. We might want to set the number of replicas. So a Helm chart also needs to have a system that allows for customization. The way that Helm deals with this is that a Helm chart typically comes with some templates. These are YAML files. So let's say I have a YAML file for my Duckling deployment. I have another one for my Duckling service. I will also have one for Raza X as well as for Raza open source and for all sorts of databases. But you can imagine that a Helm chart for Raza X would have lots of these templates predefined. Now these templates are just files on your hard drive, 
But the whole idea of templates is that you can have a configuration file alongside of it with values that it can fill in. So we might have a separate values.yaml file. And again, this typically contains lots of security keys along with some other settings that we'd like to customize. Now the idea is that when we install a package via Helm, that we are also able to pass the values.yaml file along with the installation command such that we can start hydrating these templates with appropriate values. Once these templates have the right values filled in, they can be bundled up together and installed on Kubernetes, and that is something that Helm will do for you. Now what's really great about this is that we can have a separation of concerns. Raza maintains a Helm chart that basically makes sure that everything is set up in the right way. The only thing that you need to do when you're deploying Raza with Helm is you need to provide a values.yaml file with all the configurations that will work for within your own organization. Now, the reason why this separation of concerns is nice is because now you're no longer worrying about all of these separate YAML files, and instead you can just focus in on this one single values file if you want to start a deployment. And this values.yaml file is designed in such a way that you're still very flexible, but the main win here is that there's less complexity. You have less configuration files to worry about. So to wrap up this video, what I would like to do is I would just like to show you some of these templates in our official RazaX Helm chart repository. The hope is again, that this is going to help you gain just a little bit more intuition. And then in the next video, I can show you how to use Helm to install the full RazaX stack on a Kubernetes cluster. So what you see here is the RazaX Helm GitHub repository. And I'm going to go into this folder over here called charts slash RazaX. The first thing that we see here is this chart.yaml file. So let's just have a quick look. And this file looks like it's a configuration and it also has a version number attached, an app version number, as well as some description in general, as well as a maintainer. So this would be useful information for the repository that's hosting this Helm chart. If I now go back though, and if I have a look at the templates over here, then we see something that might look a little bit more familiar. After all, we see a deployment.yaml file as well as a service.yaml file. So let's have a quick look. If you squint your eyes, you'll also notice something that's very similar. Again, we see the API version, we see something of a kind, and we again see our metadata with a label. But the main thing that's a little bit different here is that all the values in these files, they are generated via a templating language. For example, if I look at the specification over here and the number of replicas that are listed, then I see that the default value is one, unless from the values, from the duckling key, there is a replica count defined. And that's how all of these templates kind of work. There might be a default value, but the main idea is that there's going to be one configuration file with custom values that are going to be used everywhere in our deployment, which means that we will have one final configuration file that we need to address that then all of these Kubernetes deployment files can be generated automatically from it. And similarly, we also have our service defined. And again, and again, we might recognize a few things here. We are defining a service, but here again, we see familiar ports, target ports. And again, we see that this is a template because these values will be filled in automatically, given that we have a store for all of our values and settings. When you have a look around, you'll also see that there's this ingress.yaml file. You may remember from a previous video that it's one thing to have pods, another thing to have services on top of those pods. But if we wanna have something connect to the outside world, we would also need to have an ingress defined. And definitely here, there's a bit more logic happening inside of our template. You can see the if statements happen here, but these are all just templates and Helm will just abstract that away from you. The only thing we need to do is configure 
one values.yaml file, and then all of these things will be filled in on our behalf. In fact, if you go back up, you can actually see a values.yaml file as part of the project. And here you can get an impression of all the different settings that you could potentially configure. And you can also see that there are default values. But as we'll see in the next video, we can overwrite some of these defaults to fit our needs.